President Biden is wrapping up a West Coast trip to Nevada and Arizona. There, he highlighted his economic policies and made an appeal to Latino voters. In 2020, Arizona was a key victory that propelled him to the White House. Biden outpaced Trump among Hispanic voters in the state by 24 points in the last election. Arpin Gomez is here with me now, and Weijia Zhang is in Phoenix, where she's been following the president. And Weijia, I'd like to start with you. And of course, the president's visit today in Arizona, he announced an agreement with Intel for nearly $20 billion in funding and grants to boost computer chip manufacturing. This is something, of course, the administration says will create thousands of new jobs. How is that resonating with voters on the ground? And overall, how are they feeling about the economy? Well, Nicole, they say that the problem is they hear what the administration is saying and they hear the president's message about everything that he has done to give Americans more breathing room when it comes to making ends meet. The issue, they say, is that they are not feeling it. And that is why they're wondering whether these policies actually have an impact. And I think, you know, at the end of the day, the president is asking for more time. Even with the announcements that you talked about today, these are investments that are going to take years to play out, years for those jobs to come to fruition. And so there isn't this instant gratification that some people may be looking for, and that is why they feel the way they do right now. Take a listen. You know, and it's, it, it, it's just an example. I walked in, I was putting gas in the car the other day, and I walked in to buy a candy bar which I don't do too often, and I looked down, it was $2.29. I was like, I'm not buying this candy. I can afford the candy bar, but I refuse to buy this candy bar because I'm not paying $2.29 for a candy yeah, bar. Right. And I mean, and, you know, look, and I can, I can, you know, afford toilet paper and chicken and everything that, you know, that it's we the need. the principle of it. Right? But it, it used to be that we could go out and do things, you know, go out to dinner, you know, once, twice a week. Now, n no, that's not happening. You, We have to budget everything down down to the finest thing and the cost of health care and medical has gone yes. up. And I will say that uh, a couple of those voters said yes, definitively, that the economy was better under former President Trump. But then one weighed in and said, well, that's because Trump didn't have to deal with a worldwide pandemic. And who's to say that he would have done a better job than Biden? And so they did take that into consideration and have a conversation about how that is true and that, you know, Biden had an uphill battle to fight from the moment he took office. And obviously the pandemic starting under uh, the Trump administration or towards the end of his administration. So to a certain extent, he did have to deal with it. But in comparison, I guess if you could expand on that and how do these voters feel about former President Trump? Well, it's funny because all three of these voters tell us that they are not 100 percent decided about who they want to vote for. And as you know, we are in Arizona and the issue of border security is a big one. And so while they say President Biden hasn't really done anything effective to deal with the flow of migrants, they also say it's difficult for them to stomach Trump's rhetoric. And every time they think they can support the former president, he says something that changes their mind in an instant. Take a listen to that. I keep waiting for, for Trump to somehow or another calm down, and then just the other day he mentions this thing about a bloodbath if he loses. Um, and with, you know, with Joe Biden, he's 81 years old. Yeah. He's not getting any younger. Mm -hmm. Age is a big factor for me. I mean, I think, yeah, Trump hides it better because he's always just snapping and talking, and where Joe Biden, sometimes he's just, like, standing at the podium, and you can tell he just, like, loses his thoughts or he needs help to form sentences. Do you feel like you'll be looking at the vice presidential candidate more oh, yes. than usual? Yes, yes more yes. than usual. And so that's why they say they'll be paying close attention and that, no, you know, it's really going to matter who Donald Trump picks as his running mate, because that could be a deciding factor for them as they try to make up their minds before November. And, you know, Finn, just to kind of piggyback off of that, I mean, we heard from some of those voters there talking about the former president's rhetoric at times, but also there's the issue of his legal troubles as well. There are obviously some developments related to some of the cases he's facing in New York and Georgia. Many experts I talk to say they find it hard to believe that some of these cases will go to trial even before the election. I mean, how are the former president's legal issues 
impacting voters? Do they care? At this point, you're seeing that it isn't really a factor in some of these polling, recent polling that we've seen. Uh, however, uh, I do think it, it, it serves as a reminder that this president, the former president, excuse me, uh, this has been a long-held tactic that he has utilized throughout his, his really his professional career. Delay, delay, delay. And in this instance, what you're seeing in, in, in the several cases is that many of these may not, may not come uh, to trial uh, or may not be decided by the November 5th election. Which so, could work to his benefit. Which could absolutely work to his benefit. And you are seeing that. There was a poll out the, uh, earlier this week that did show that there, it did have some impact. If he was convicted, let's say, in that Manhattan hush money trial, it could have an impact with independent voters, something that both campaigns have said they are targeting. And then also kind of getting back to the state of Arizona, the significance of uh, Latino voters in particular. I mean, you were just Crucial. in the yeah. state mm -hmm. as well. I mean, how critical is this state for both candidates, both President Biden, former President Trump, and also this demographic when we're talking about Latino voters and voters of color overall? Uh, I think what you're seeing is that the, the Latino vote is specifically in battleground states like Arizona and Nevada are crucial to both campaigns, and they're making it a top priority for their strategy looking to November. Uh, if you recall, in 2020, this was a, this, a state that was decided by 10 thousand votes, Nicole. That small margin is what decided that election, helped decide that election. Uh, there are 36 million, uh, potentially 36 million eligible Latino voters this time around. That's almost double uh, since 2008. It is, a, it is a crucial part of the, of the Biden coalition in 2020. And if you look at, at some of our, even our own latest polling, there was a poll that, that we had that came out last month that showed that Biden was down by 12 points uh, since 2020 among Hispanic voters. So what are some of the tactics though, that the campaign is doing to try to win some of those folks back uh, or keep them in their column? Uh, yeah, and you know, it, it is, they're, they're focusing on, on issues that they think matter to uh, the, this crucial Latino vote. Uh, they're, they're, but they're, it's not just immigration. Nicole, as we saw earlier in the show, it's about the economy. It's about cost of things as well. Uh, but they're looking. They're, they have. They're, they're, they have a robust uh, ad uh, strategy. You saw that not just in Spanish and English, but also in Spanglish, which many Latinos, including yours truly, utilizes. It's a smart maneuver they believe to try to it, it try to appeal to that to the, to those Latino voters. Uh, and also, into, into, uh, they've also emphasized, the, the president himself said in, in Phoenix, uh, he pointed to the, uh, the remarks by former President Trump in Ohio last week, uh, where he said that uh, migrants were uh, not people, that they were animals in some cases. And, and some of that rhetoric is really something that, even, that, that it is, it could impact some of these voters who are, who are still undecided which, they, which way they will vote. All right. And then very briefly, Ouija, you know, what else did you hear uh, from voters during your time uh, there in Phoenix? Well, I think they wanted to stress that they understand how important their vote is because they are in one of just a handful of swing states and they understand how critical the Latino vote is. But they tell me they are not a monolith and it's really difficult to just use one ad campaign to reach out to everybody because there are so many varying opinions and priorities within the Latino community. The one thing they agreed on, though, is that uh, in their culture, they say they don't like it when people beat around the bush. They want people to get to the point, and they're tired of hearing Biden's rhetoric and flowery language. They want to hear more details. They want to hear a specific platform about what he plans to do so they do feel the benefit of his policies instead of just listening to him talk about it. All right. Weijia Zhang in Phoenix. Ben Gomez here with me in Washington. Thanks so much.